In a previous video, we saw that game developers make AIs see with raycasts, lines you throw to probe the game world. Godot comes with the raycast nodes to do that in both 2D and 3D games. You add the raycast node as a child of your AI, then give it a length and direction via its cast to property. That's your ray, which you can move and rotate. The ray will turn with your AI, so you just have to make it point forward. Once you enable it, the raycast node automatically checks for collisions every frame and stops at the closest object it touches. You can use its isColliding method to know if it is colliding, and then call getCollider to get the object it hit. If you register your player character's type with the class name keyword, you can check that the ray collided with the player using the is keyword. And with that quick setup, you already have a working line of sight. It is then up to you to make good use of it. Casting a single ray has an issue. If it barely touches the corner of a wall, the AI doesn't see the player and it feels broken. How do we solve that? With more rays. By casting multiple in a cone, we get better AI vision. You could add a dozen raycast nodes by hand, but as lazy coders, we do it with code. We start with three variables. The angle of the cone of vision, the max view distance, and the angle between rays. Dividing the two angles gives us the number of rays. In a loop, to calculate where each should cast, we can take the up vector, multiply it by the AI's view range, and rotate it using the vector's rotated method. Then we add each ray as a child of the AI and enable it. We loop over all the rays every frame and check if at least one collides with the player. If so, our AI sees them. If you create many rays, they will constantly check for collisions. This is fine for simple games with few enemies on screen and you can see all the rays in the editor, but this does have a performance cost for larger games. Here are some tips to optimize this. First, you can use a single ray and move it around to sweep an area every frame. You'd use code similar to when we created many rays, but instead, you move one ray and call force raycast update on it in a loop. As soon as it hits the player, you break out of the loop. Next, you can pre-calculate the vectors you assign to the rays in an array to not recalculate them constantly. You can optimize this even more by making broad checks before casting rays. There's no point casting rays if the player is not in front of the AI at all. You can use Godot's area node with any shape, like a sphere or a box. Every frame, you can check if the player is in the area before casting rays. The last trick is to pause the AI when it's outside the screen. In Godot, you can do that automatically in 2D with the Visibility Enabler 2D node. The node enables processing only when it's inside the view. Add it as a child of the AI, check the physics process property, and that's pretty much all you need to do. While there's a 3D variant of the node, it doesn't feature toggling physics processing. Instead, you'll need to use the visibility notifier and connect to its screen entered and screen exited signals. There are many more ways to use raycasts. You can use them to grab ledges, to know which unit the player clicked in a 3D game, and so much more. We cover all those in our Godot cookbook, Godot Node Essentials. You can get three Node Essential guides for free right now. You just have to click the link in the description and enter your email. You'll get one free guide every day for three days. Be creative, have fun, and let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.